Looks like small morsel is not enough. What you want is a nice big chunk from big fat mobs that are usually capable of defending themselves or turning you into their dinner. So in this episode of No Gameplay Just Tutorial, we will learn how to hunt potentially or naturally hostile mobs. Before we begin, know that unless you're Wickfred who earns health and sanity from fallen foes, direct combat is rarely a good idea. Even if you can take one or two mobs by yourself, most drone starved creatures tend to be in a group and very protective of each other. Then again, most of them are absolute idiots and could fall for simple traps or easily manipulated into killing each other, so better stick to those methods. Spiders are easily best source of monster meat, which itself is poisonous but ingredient to various crockpot dishes. Spiders spawn from these spider dens crawling out during dusk and night or any time you step on their webs. The den grows up to tier 3 and the bigger it is, more spiders pop out and even more if you start fighting on the doormat. Tier 2 and Tier 3 Spider Den are also backed up with Spider Warriors, who are basically Spider's more vicious cousins. Fortunately, spiders could be caught with this rabbit trap, so set up few near the web and keep on luring them to their new home. This way, you could even empty Tier 3 Spider Den. If you're playing as Wendy, good news, her ghost sister Abigail can easily take down score of spiders herself. Weber is an interesting character since spiders are neutral towards him and could also be allied like pigs. This means you could persuade them to killing their own friends and family. Just make sure not to get involved in a massacre and press down the collect key to pick up meats before they are eaten. Also, as a Weber, you could upgrade Spider Den using Spider Silks. Five silks are needed to upgrade Tier 1 to Tier 2 and another five to upgrade it to Tier 3. Useful fact if you want more spiders and then meet around you fast. Hounds are probably the second best source of monster meat since they will visit you every now and then after a lot of barking which acts as a warning. The longer you survive the tougher this hound attack becomes as in number of hounds, the frequency and the duration of this warning. Also depending on the season, the wave could be accompanied by fire or ice hounds which will burn and freeze you upon death. Good news is, they are easily distracted, meaning you can lure them to other more powerful mobs. And the best option is usually a pack of beefaloes. Once the hounds get bored of chasing you, they will run after the cows. Big mistake. If you manage to wear a bush hat before the dogs show up, they will go straight after the beefalo, so it's nice to have one. Also, your idiot character tends to stand up and warn you about it, so make sure to stay hidden well. If you're getting used to eating household pets, let's move on to cats, cat coons to be more precise. They have low health, deal little damage, and fights alone, so you could bash in with a simple weapon and the armor. Despite their size, they drop meat instead of morsel and complementary cattail if you're lucky. Cat coons are found in deciduous forests spawning from these hollow stumps. But note that they can only respawn for 8 times. After that, the stump will become abandoned and no more cat meat for you. Also, if you're playing as a Weber, the cat coons will become hostile to you, so be careful about that. Remember these guys who would not let you fish in peace? Well, let's take their legs and see how they love that. Like spiders, they are caught with rabbit traps, so placing one or two near you while fishing could yield extra meat. Now, since frogs spawn only by one or two near pond during daytime, you may think they aren't really reliable source of food. But hey, what's this? Every spring, the world gifts you with frog rain. So guess they're gonna be on a menu whether you like it or not. So you could set traps all over the floor, or you could hire these rock lobsters, best mobs to farm spider, hound, and frog. Just need to be brave and skilled enough to travel through the cave and find where they're at. For starter, prepare this walled area with rock in the middle. Then by feeding rocks or minerals, bring about 3 or 4 of these big guys back to the surface. By the way, a rock will make them follow you for 3 minutes. And once you get close to this place, they will be attracted to the rock you placed inside and will not budge. Any spiders, hounds, or frogs that bother them will be annihilated. So just hide under the bush head and wait till the storm passes. Sometimes the rock lobsters will try to walk back home. Usually that's when I kill my employee, but since they are much stronger, feed them another rock and wait. They'll be back soon. Not only pigs are potential slaves, they are also potential food source. Just like Weber with Spider, coax them into killing each other. But again, make sure to pick up the loose before they are eaten away. 
Another method is to send them off to a suicide mission, and even if they succeed, it only means extra loot for you. Move on till these expendable soldiers die out one by one. You could turn pigs into werepigs by feeding four monster meats or having them stay outside during full moon. This could be dangerous as werepigs have higher health and they are hostile, but instead of just one meat or pig skin, they drop two meats and one pig skin, which could be well worth it. Of course, there's the obvious way of equipping Bushhead near stronger mobs so these pigs would get themselves killed. Plan B is to use small stack of cheap foods such as petals or seeds. When placed near were pigs, you can attack this distracted idiot safely. Pat it in a rhythmic fashion like in the video, since if you attack too frequently, they will get annoyed. This way, I also disrupt it from actually eating any food laid down. So technically, with enough skill, you could use only two or even one food item, but five if you want to play safe. This is also one way to get a lot of manure too, so if you want some crap on your meat, add a few red mushrooms, as those are poisonous and 18 of them can actually kill the were pig. Like catcoons, the pigs are also hostile towards Weber, racist bastards. Beefaloes are found in Savannah, and even though they are one of the most powerful neutral mobs, Direct combat could be the better strategy. The only problem might be separating one from its herd, but this can also be done easily. Find one that strayed a little too far from its friends and say hi. Now try to lure it and the others chasing you far away from its original turf. Due to their either forgiving or forgetful nature, they will stop chasing you quite soon. Then while they all return to their home, stand in front of the one you targeted and wait for the others to completely leave. And there you go, this one's all yours. Hit once, run off, wait till it attacks the air, get in, hit 3 or 4 times or even 5 if you're good at this. Soon enough, you'll have steak for dinner. If your combat skill is hilariously bad, try using Tooth Trap instead. Place one right under its feet and keep resetting it. After 9 times, you can kill it without aggroing its friends around. Approaching a beefalo could be complicated during spring or any other time they are in heat as they become hostile, so have this beefalo hat equipped and proceed with caution. Qualifan is basically a cute chunk of meat, the hard part is tracking it. You must find series of suspicious pile of dirt, guessing its next location based on the direction of the footprint. Better be quick because the track doesn't stay forever. If you happen to run into a place where the dirt pile becomes less visible, walk to an approximate location of the dirt pile, then press down the action key. This way, your character may have chance of uncovering it by sheer luck. You will be notified when the tracking comes to an end, but advance carefully because there is a chance that you may have been following a Varg, a hellhound that will chase you across the map while spawning even more dogs on you. Really nice to see how the effort pays off. If you even catch a glimpse of this creature, I suggest you get out before he sees you and come back preferably with more meat shields. Now let's say you actually found a qualifant, then congratulations, prepare for a feast. These freaks will run away when approached, meaning you could easily lure them into more hostile grounds, but fighting directly is just as easy as killing beefaloes. You could try real hard to corner it or hide under bush at waiting forever to strike. But the wiser option is to use ranged weapon first. Once you manage to get its nerve, take it down by kiting. It's also a good idea to bring one home as an emergency food supply, but if you don't want it to crap all over the base, build this pen by simply putting a space between two walls. Qualifants are too fat to go through that. Lure it in, shut the entrance, then kill it when you need to. Again, if you're terrible at combat, use this tooth trap method from before. And if you're a bit of a psychopath, light up its manure. Fire won't be enough to kill it, but it will be enough to lower its health quite a bit. If you live near desert, bolt goats could substitute beefalo. Unlike beefaloes or most mobs, they do not mind watching others being murdered. Bolt goats also do not like straying too far from their herd and will only chase you to certain point. So even those unskilled could perform kiting safely. Problem is, this is rather time consuming. Like coalifants, bolt goats cannot go through space between two walls but tend to hold grudge much longer if you're still in its chasing range. So caging is not the best plan. Instead, build three walls in a row and kiting these guys becomes really easy. Still, their attacks are fast and long ranged, so be more cautious than when you hunt coalifants. When charged with lightning, the ghosts become more dangerous, but they drop electric milk upon death, a key ingredient to ice cream, the best sanity food. So you could purposely charge the goat with Morningstar if you can't wait for the lightning. 
but make sure to wear a rain hat, raincoat, or umbrella to avoid being electrocuted every time you attack, and be quick about it, since they will try to break down the walls if they're not targeting you. Hunting vocals during spring is not recommended, as rainstorm with lightning is frequent, and you will be overwhelmed by the number of charged vocals. Tallbirds, they are hostile, fast, and deadly, but you really want that two meter drops and that big blue egg. Interestingly, the tall birds only go after one target, meaning you can attack it as many times as you want as long as the initial target is kept alive. So it's best to hunt the tall birds with some pigs. Let the meatbags charge in first, then strike while they occupy the bird. So whatever you do, do not be the first to go near the thing or its nest. After the hunt, build a wall around its nest, which is the exact spot the tall bird will respawn. So next time, it will become much easier prey. Building a little rabbit cage next to it will keep its attention while you go in for the kill. Just make sure the bird is actually targeted on the rabbit as they do get tired time to time. Now, if you're lucky, you might come across this set piece where you have a bunch of boulders and tall birds. For this, you'll need better shield than pigs. So bring at least two rock lobsters and they'll charge the place. Stay back and make sure it attracts all the tall birds in the vicinity so no one attacks you when you intervene. Once you wiped out the whole place, the boulders will provide necessary materials for the walls. And that is all I have for this video. If you have your own tips on hunting mobs, share them on the comment. They're most likely terrible and I'll have something to laugh at. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!